Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Fuel community. My name is Wack. Today is March 19th. Today's episode is going to cover some ETF developments for the ETH Spot ETF. We're going to be talking about its impact on Rocket Pool, and we're also going to be talking about some news about the Smart Note Stack version 2 and a lot more. So let's get started. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6. Okay, so like I said, there's been some developments on the ETH staking ETF front, sorry, the ETH spot ETF front, and uh, that news has to do with staking. So here it's uh, Fidelity who have put in an amendment to their ETF application, and they are adding staking to their text. So they said here, we have this from tier 10K, which is DB, who said, according to the registration statement, the sponsor may, from time to time, stake a portion of the fund's assets through one or more trusted staking providers, which may include an affiliate of the sponsor staking providers. So we're going to be digging into a lot of that later, but um, here Autism Capital replied by saying, this makes the ETF even more unlikely in our opinion, one extra layer of tricky SEC complication. And others are saying, uh, when do commodities have staking yields? So this look like Bitcoin replies here as well. And um, let's get to some actual like legitimate replies. So we're going to start with the Bloomberg boys. So James Safar here is saying that Fidelity not giving up on Ethereum's ETFs and not giving up on SEC allowing them to stake within the ETF. Our base case is still that these are not going to be approved. So they're saying somewhere between 30 and 40 percent, around 35 percent approval chance. But um, Safar was not convinced here by these changes. And then um, James Safar says, just to be clear, I don't think they should be denied, but I think that at this point they will be denied. So. Um, Kale, he says, you know, does this not change the odds? Is it possible that SEC is being silent this time in order to not repeat media circus that happened pre-BTC ETF? And James says it's possible, but they need to start having conversations with the issuers ASAP, and they don't seem to be doing that based on anything we've seen thus far. So then um, there were some more questions here as well, but let's go talk to, let's see what uh, Eric Balkun says. So Eric here says, he says, I made up an adage. Until the issuers say the SEC is reached out, approval shall remain in serious doubt. So basically, he's also saying that, um, like, you know, what we need to see is the SEC reaching out to the approvers, sorry, the, the applicants, not necessarily the applicants reaching out to the SEC to change things. They need to see the communication coming from the other side. Um, and then there were some, uh, <laughs> some nice replies here to Eric. Uh, one of them here, um, is from Evan, um, Evan, six, Evan 66, Evan, Evan SS6. And he says, what's your updated probability of approval if they engage? So James Sifat replied saying, it would have to skyrocket. They need to know the source of the information, exactly what is happening. But if comments on S1s are given to all the issues, it would have to take us north of 50% again. So it's still not taking us like to that 70, 80, 90% chance of the Bitcoin one had. But, um, at the moment, they're not seeing those things that they really want to be seeing. So uh, that's that's like some of the information there. Let's have a look at some of the, uh, like here, you know, um, Evan again is saying that, you know, the denial is in the back bag, right? So he's like, you know, why would they be doing this if the denial was happening? And then um, the person says, I really hate when I agree with my contra, but I think Kamikaze um, might have it right. And um, Evan says, what's your actual position though? Because whatever he's been doing doesn't seem to be working. So this is like, um, this is a TMN XEQ person gives their opinion why they think it won't happen. He says, contrary to BTC, there's no preconditions with issuers. We've been told this is indicative of lower approval chances. This shows what kind of banana republic the US is. I thought due process would be, would govern the process. Hence, I rated the signal too low with BTC. And he says staking likely leads to increased joint prep work and precondition. Um, we saw with BTC how long this takes. This is absence, with absence of precondition, I think it's unlikely to pass at that time. He says I'm super annoyed by this discussion. Um, and then, please bro, one more ETF, please bro. <laughs> and then he says, um, I was told spot BT, uh, BTC ETF would make BTC futures um, ETF Bito redundant. Um, meanwhile, Bito now consistently pulls half of Ibit's volume. 
Um, so then the kamikaze tweet, he says, staking being added is a bad sign, you idiots. It means the SEC, they know the SEC isn't going to approve. So just throwing in their full wish list for the litigation phase, which will take two years. This is confirmation that the ETFs are not coming in May. Now let's have a look at a little bit of the opposite side of this. So Nate, Nate Garacci here is one of the people who thinks that it will be happening. So he says amended 19B4 filled by Fidelity Spot Ether, Spot Ether ETF. This includes more in-depth analysis on correlation um, between ETH Spot and futures markets. Assumes getting feedback on this is important. This is also references um, BT, spot BTC ETF approval. Um, here's the money page, my opinion. Issue was not going to let the SEC off the hook. So what they're saying is that they've kind of figured out what the reasons that the SEC might try to argue for denying the ETF. And what they're doing already is kind of um, undermining that that stance and saying that what you're basically saying is wrong and one of the things is like they're, they're saying that the um, correlation between spot and futures is like extremely strong um, even stronger uh, grayscale made a case like in the presentation in london yesterday they said that the correlation is even stronger um, between eth and the futures than it was for bitcoin and its futures markets so um nate here thinks that this is more likely um, Kale here says, do you think the Bloomberg guys are wrong? And this gets approved by May. And people are saying like, yes. And they're saying it's a lock. And they're saying that it's going to happen in the next year for sure. But again, like, you know, the Bloomberg guys are the ones that have been doing this for a really long time. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Here, DC Investor had an interesting take on it as well. He says, I'm not going to tell you that it's a done deal. But here are the ETH ETF facts as I see them. So he says the um, CFTC. And that's the Commodities um, Trading Commission um, has said, has declared ETH to be a commodity and previous SEC chairs have also done this. This is ETH has the CME futures with sufficient liquidity and years of runtime. ETH also has futures based ETFs. No other crypto assets have these attributes except for BTC and ETH. BTC ETF has already paved the way for a legal precedent for a spot ETF in court. Gary keeps losing cases in an increasingly dramatic fashion each time. We're going to talk about that later a lot. Um, each time with the SEC being sanctioned, from, we're going to talk about that actually. Yeah, um, Gary can't politically afford another capricious enforcement action. He knows he can't win. Fidelity yesterday added staking income to the ETF, likely not payable to customers at first, but still, and um, as maybe something they're willing to give up in negotiations with the SEC as a face saving maneuver allowing for approval. That's like the the like they're attaching this just so they can let go of it later and that what the SEC can say, hey look, we didn't like approve everything they wanted kind of thing. Um so here uh, DC says, so while it's not certain, most people here have priced the ETF at zero probability over the past week. This seems like an overreaction and also like an opportunity to be determined by ETF in May or soon thereafter seems much very much on the table. So this is really interesting because ETH has gone down against BTC in the ratio and one of the things that people are saying is like that is the rejection being priced in now uh, or the majority of a rejection being priced in now um, but um, that you know the the response if it does get approved will be even stronger because very few people are pricing it in. Um, Jasper here had a very interesting take that is going to tie all this to Rocket Pool. So um, let's let's talk about that here. So Jasper says um, through one or more trusted staking providers, which may include an affiliate of the sponsor. So the sponsor of the the basically all of these ETFs are using Coinbase. They're going to be holding the crypto, and then it says um, you know that they're the sponsor of it. I guess maybe that's what Jasper is insinuating here. He says what decentralized staking provider has the closest ties with Coinbase again. So Coinbase, of course, um, is an ODA member of Rocket Pool through Coinbase Ventures and Unit 410. Um, so Jasper is basically insinuating here that Rocket Pool might be a strong recipient of some of these um, some of these movements. And then there was some like uh, talking, you know, the staking component getting added, etc., and how that might change things. But um, basically, Jasper's saying here that like a Rocket Pool have the chance of being a direct uh, recipient of some of this staking if it happens. Um, I don't know whether or not um, you know I can support Jasper with what he's saying with that, but 
that's definitely a very interesting perspective um however that kind of like brought up um um brought up like this really long discussion that happened in in trading yesterday where um l30 um was i think it was l30 who started it um was was talking about um how yeah here so like um L30 says they're talking about Rocket Pool. Uh, I might be high, but it says staking through an affiliate Rocket Pool of, uh, equals Rocket Pool of the sponsor equals Coinbase. So basically, this was um, L30 kind of pulling Jasper's tweet into trading. Um, and then I replied by saying, just wait two, three months and then you'll see. Um, and then I tweeted Jasper's tweet there as well, um, basically covering the same, same information. Um, and then L30 says, I can't wait. And I think we were kind of insinuating different things here. But what I was insinuating here was that uh, the Houston upgrade is going to allow institutional whale marriages to take place at the protocol level. Now, why is this important, right? Like, so I've explained this at Rocket Fuel before, but I'm going to take a minute to explain it again. So currently, there's a couple of different flavors of whale marriages that have taken place in the Rocket Pool community. The most famous of these is the ones that Marco Baco has with patricio where marco puts the eth forward patricio puts the rpl and then the rewards get sent to a splitter contract where rpl goes to patricio and eth goes to marco baco um that's kind of like a trust-based thing where you know they kind of expect each other to uh, withdraw when they ask etc like you know and all that then there's another uh, kind of staking marriage that's happened in rocket pool as well which is mine and ramana's a shrimp marriage um and this is you know very much uh following the same kind of system where you know we we've got a splitter contract where that's the withdrawal address of the node and then the eth goes to ramana the rpl comes to me and that's like our marriage arrangement now people have done this literally like patricio and uh marco have millions if not tens of millions of dollars of crypto uh locked up in these in these contracts which just shows you that you know they're extremely they're people have trusted them however the level of trust in these is not as high as it, it would be if these were audited if these were at the rocket pool protocol level which is now what is happening with the houston upgrade so the houston upgrade like in the rocket pool already allows stake rpl on behalf it will now also allow stake eth on behalf another thing it will do is split the, the withdrawal addresses so there'll be a separate withdrawal address for rpl and then there will be a separate withdrawal address for eth so this will basically be making um like whale marriages enshrined at the rocket pool protocol level this will be audited of course you know during the audits that have happened during houston so um you'll have sigma prime and like other like consensus diligence these are the best of the best in terms of auditing in crypto um in ethereum space and they're going to be auditing these contracts which is amazing so now what what we're trying to say here is that the stage is being set for institution level whales to get involved in splitting up these marriages sorry setting up these marriages in a way that they just weren't comfortable doing before so um houston you know should be going to test that within the next few weeks um at that in the test net area you know people can kind of play around with whale marriages through the protocol itself see how it works for them how they like it how they don't like it and then um once houston goes live on may 6th uh, what can happen then is people can actually start setting up these actual marriages on on the mainnet as on on itself. So what I'm insinuating is that you know there's these um, long term staking partners that we've had who've not staked with Rocket Pool because they didn't want RPL, and that's fine. That's their prerogative. But now they'll be able to stake with Rocket Pool without needing RPL because there are people waiting on the sidelines who will happily stake their RPL. Um, on their node with these security guarantees now that will come with enshrined whale marriages so that's the kind of thing that i was kind of insinuating here in in trading yesterday and we we're just kind of like painting the picture of what this might look like um and um here l30 was saying coinbase already partners with etf and they're involved with rocket pool so it makes the most logical sense of course they could just keep it in house that option as well um and then um i said um that i can't wait either and that i don't own enough rpl and then Lee was saying, you know, I wish um, I knew what you knew. Um, your, excite your excitement is exciting. So I basically, I said that um, like it's not that I know something that other people don't. Uh, what, I've, what I've got here is, you know, little crumbs of information that I've caught from different places over, over years, basically. Um, and using that, those crumbs of information 
to kind of paint the picture of what um, it might look like or what I think it will look like once the Houston upgrade goes through. And this conversation was kind of like giving giving that information and like um, kind of sharing that information, right? So, you know, I shared Jasper's tweet again. And then um, what I did was um, I said that, you know, the the problem is that this is the soonest we'll get this like two to three months away because Houston in itself is, um, you know, seven weeks away, six, seven weeks away. And then it might take another month or two before we start seeing the, the fruits of that. Um, and Val replied actually by saying, why is that a problem? If you actually believe the, you know, that substantial amount of ETH is going to come to Rocket Pool, um, then you want to start buying RPL now because the price is so low. And this actually ties into a conversation that I was having earlier in the day where I was like, I'm really getting tempted now to withdraw my validators and use the ETH to buy RPL. The price is just so attractive to me right now with with, with these ideas in mind. So uh, I said, I'm buying as hard as I can. Um, and the boss, he's saying either Wack knows something huge or is entirely too bullish. I hope for the former. Um, and then I replied by saying, why not both? <laughs> um, but there's one thing that I'd want to kind of um, find here that um, I should have I should have pulled out for you all beforehand. So I said that this is these are pieces of information that have been like years in the making and how how it's all going to come together. Um, and we were just talking about <laughs> this section. Nice. So I described myself as a shrimp and then L30 made this picture of like a guy holding a huge giant like human sized shrimp. So I like that. Um, there was this there was this um, tweet sorry this post that I'm, I'm seeing if i can pull it up so i said remember this so this is i'm just going to mention it and then you guys can put this picture together yourself so here my source is a story in two pictures gigabread equals landed so this was gigabread this was from um 2022 right around the time of the merge and consensus of course you know which is um, run by joe lubin who is the biggest holder of eth in the world um he's got like literal millions of eth um he through consensus they had this idea of like you know at the merge what it's going to look like for consensus and you can go back and like watch the episodes that i did around that time because this was really exciting but what happened was um in the documents that uh, consensus put out around the merge one of the things here said um let me see if i can get get bigger on this um it says um something about um stake with rocket pool basically right as one of their timeline bullet points and then Underneath that, it says at least a portion of those in blue chip crypto projects like Ethereum and Filecoin, meaning consensus could very well be holding tens of billions of dollars on this balance sheet. So Marso was kind of putting together this piece of information um, of, you know, consensus, how much um, uh, ETH they hold, and also the stake with Rocket Pool aspect of it. But I guess what happened between that point and now, you know, this was in, in September of 2020. Um, what happened between now and then was that they didn't want the RPL or they didn't have the RPL to scale with the way that I wanted. So these are the kind of crumbs that I'm saying that, you know, we're putting together um, is this is what I mean by that is you get these, you know, inclinations from these big, big groups saying that they want to stake with Rocket Pool, literally consensus had in their merge documents. Um, and then, and then understanding that now they'll be able to do that in a way that won't require them to hold rpl and they'll get a huge outsized rewards compared to solo staking it just makes sense that this this is plausible i'm not going to say it's going to happen of course none of this is financial advice i'm not asking you to trade based on this or anything like that but this is what i'm seeing and this is where that um you know tr trading was getting overdosed on hopium yesterday <laughs> was coming from so um yeah um i'm happy to share my theories with you all um but um there's there is of course a chance that this doesn't happen this like i said is just my theory and the theory of like jasper and some other people as well but it's not based on nothing right like there's based on these crumbs that we've gathered from different places and kind of put those ideas together so um that's all i'll be saying on that okay next we've got some news from joe here so talking about bringing news so he says um so I said, do you bring news of whale marriages after Houston? Because that's what the conversation was taking place at the time. Um, and he says, no. So I was like, oh, boo hiss. But I said, give us bread. So he says the bread that he has is about the smart node. Of, smart node is now two words, not one word, which is shocking. But that's us at Dave's request. So he says the version two development of version two has finally caught up with version one. So it looks like he's getting very close to having the alpha release ready for the smart node version two and um, he says i just have to merge the latest smart node install scripts and templates since in version two they live in the smart node repo now um 
and then we're ready to jam so it's really exciting that joe is getting close to being done with that um and then he was just showing how many changes he's made so there's been changes to 100 1141 changed files with 68,849 additions and 95,575 deletions so there was a lot of work that went into making smart node version 2 uh patches says now i have now uh well now i have to fork it um and uh uh, patches says you can keep calling it smart smart stack i haven't been calling it smart stack patches i call it a smart node stack so um that's because that's what it is um anyway um <laughs> so calling it smart stack whack and then joe replied by saying whack stack and then stack 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 and stack 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 attack so there's too many stacks here but anyway um then joe came back later and um he had a screenshot of he says so it begins baby and then there's the files so it says rocket pool underscore two dot o dot o and then there's a bunch of different file types for like air amd 64 eggs as well and like um the file structures for that so this was really cool um development like joe's getting really close now to i guess move on to internal testing i guess maybe he's already been testing as he goes but like some internal testing before we get the alpha release we'll probably get it looks like we'll probably get the alpha release pretty soon uh, it might be that you know we want houston to go live with version 2 potentially i'm not sure but that's really exciting so thanks joe for sharing that news so uh, just as you know people are getting really excited there was also some stuff that was giving people some worries yesterday in trading um, and that was thomas exiting some of his validators so here you know around 5 30 p.m eastern time thomas started to exit a bunch of his validators people got a little bit panicky saying why is thomas exiting thomas of course is one of the biggest whales in the protocol and what ended up happening was that um, thomas was actually moving um some um eth to another uh, validator and um, here he uh, staked 50,000 RPL uh, you know as one casually does um, and um, started creating um, uh, mini pools with uh, the operator share of AETH so he's just kind of um, moving things along with that so Thomas of course you know is not leaving rocket pool <laughs> i hope anytime soon although he did insinuate that you know once you know in the future uh arrow is going to be funded by income from rocket pool so at that point he would likely be selling uh, rewards etc but um i guess he's not at that point yet so yay yeah, hey. um anyway uh thomas of course then started making more validators which was really really amazing to see so thank you thomas for that and then just to kind of assuage some of the worries that i guess people in um discord had um he came by and he said i just helped my girlfriend buy some rocket pool some rpl tokens um and he uh, he said let's not let her down um and then um he was also saying that people were saying like are you gonna get her to set her own validator um and um he she he said the jasper said did you set up a node and everything already and thomas says not yet but she really wants her own node so he's really like orange pilling people in his life which is really cool so thanks for that thomas okay next we've got news of notional finance and they are about to get ready for their mainnet launch on um, ethereum mainnet and their version 3 is coming to mainnet launch so version 3 is also also already excuse me running on arbitrum and on arbitrum they have some really great rewards for rocket pools are eth token um you know you can do some looping on there and they've got some really great incentives going on well here they're saying that they're going to have some more incentives so they're saying we're going to be getting more yield so notional improvement proposal 57 authorizes the distribution of 6 million note token incentives to version 3 uh, liquidity positions over the next year and their incentives will be focused on eth usdc usdt and r eth so this is really great this is like why i have really loved having notional like coverage on the show um because they really seem to be uh wanting the best for rocket pool and our eth especially and for themselves as well of course um and then they're saying that they're going to introduce more collateral types so this is one of the things this is one of the things i saw that was a little bit disappointed because when i talked to teddy from notional he was saying that they really want to get rpl involved as well and that was something i was really excited about but I think RPL as a token has changed a little bit since then. And sadly, we're not as liquid and, you know, we've fallen down the ranks a little bit. So they're not including RPL at this time, but hopefully they will improve, include RPL later. So they said they're going to give like leveraged yield on balancer or a finance um, 
with Rocket Pool, Aave, Token Logic, Curve Finance, etc. And then they had some um, th the rates on Arbitrum here as well, which is the attached tweet. Um, says that you know you can get eight percent on your um, deposits, li liquidity positions for uh, our ETH right now. And then they have some like native uh, looping stuff that you can do, which will give you like even more rewards. So um, definitely check out Notional if you are interested in using our ETH in DeFi. Okay, next we had this post from Long for Wisdom, and this is news from a few weeks ago where they were setting up a new bounty incentive system, and the bounty was basically people would get paid for proposing bounties, defining bounties, or supporting a bounty hunter, and there were different ways of basically making sure that we produce better bounties, and then also paid people money for working on bounties, which of course we really need. So then that started a discussion with like Shifrain and val and some others who were involved in kind of like epinef as well of course um in kind of figuring out what those bounty systems might look like and then on the behind the scenes like long for wisdom was kind of working on that stuff so he has said made some updates to reduce length and hopefully improve accessibility here and there's a new rpip for this uh, so this is rpip 39 so it says this includes removing the initial lever suggestions which I will add to the initial post, so they're still available for discussion. Um, it says I've not made any logical or structural changes so far. So now the next step is, of course, going to vote. So it says uh, I made some further updates. Again, no major changes, just taking into account some feedback from various people and, and then kind of insinuating what the feedback was and then setting up a sentiment poll. So if you are at all curious about how this bounty will work, please go and read the text of RPIP 39 and then please signal here whether or not you want this to go to vote and whether you think this should be vote so here nobody said that this is great but they have said this is good enough and they support moving it to vote so here we had um, five people which is 83 percent of respondents including myself who said that support moving to vote this is good enough and then one person said they want to abstain from this so um, that should hopefully be coming to a vote near you soon um yeah Okay, next we had um, this uh, back and forth from Owl, look, uh, LFO, looking for owls, and from Bossy, and this was about the wall command. So basically, there was a, a Rocket Watch uh, output that was called by using the command slash wall, and what was happening with that was um, people were using it and kind of getting depressed because they just saw that we were in a low liquidity zone and uh, things were looking really bad and they were just not happy with with how it was looking um and the reality of it was that you know this this was just using the uniswap pool even though there's other pools out there that have rpl liquidity that were not kind of being understood by this and also there was um a secondary um the the fact is that with binance listing going live and like centralized exchanges getting rpl on there what's happened is that um most of rocket pool's liquidity now is us dollars like vehicles not eth like vehicles so this this wall just was kind of pointless in a sense so you can see on the screen now and you can see my picture in the corner as well but um what happened is lfo first and then bossy kind of like started saying that this is not good we don't want this anymore like how can we remove this because it's he's lfo saying um i see this only it's a, it gives people the wrong idea because it makes people think that there's no liquidity for rpl however there is liquidity for rpl uh, it's just in different places not just in that uniswap pool so uh bossy was like yeah please let's remove it he's been complaining about it for a while anyway and then um <laughs> halulu was joking about asking math to just ban rocket watch anyway invis was like i'm not doing this like i'm at work etc but of course invis being the awesome guy that he is um then actually disabled it so when you use the wall command uh later um, it says disabled by bossy it's been called called 13 times since so this was actually really nice that this is not there now it's actually like a, like a legitimate thing we were actually trying to campaign to vaca to remove like change the buy thresholds for the ratio bot so we the buy bot so it like signals buys back at ten thousand dollars how it used to be and maybe removing the sell bot altogether <laughs> just so we can like you know psyops the community into some positive sentiment but um I, he hasn't he hasn't come through with that yet so that's a bit of a shame okay next we got a little bit of drama a tiny tiny bit of drama in um, the support thread yesterday so here we had wes wes floyd from eigenlayer coming in and saying that he's working on docs for haleshki 
And basically what they want to do is like kind of talk people through how to restake with Eigen there um, using um, using Rocket Pool um, and our ETH and kind of wanting to give them a step-by-step -step guide of how to do that. So he says, I'm from Eigenlayer working on instructions for our Khaleshki docs, updating this content. And that's the guide basically telling people how to do that. Um, he says, can I get your guidance on how users can mint Khaleshki R ETH themselves via Etherscan, sending uh, to a contract deposit mini pool or otherwise? Um, and then Viz says, uh, here's the khaleshki.rocketpool.net where you can go and do that. He says, the deposit will be full once your farmers end up abusing our protocol and we won't be able to accept deposits if that happens please add a disclaimer to your documentation so we don't have to constantly tell confused farmers about this fact so what um, invis is saying is that basically people are trying to farm uh, eigenlayer airdrop and what they're doing is they're going to rocket pool they're minting all the r eth so then there's not enough space for people who want to actually legitimately use rocket pool um and is making a bad experience for them without having more node operators coming online on Haleshki. So I guess the Haleshki has the same issues with the mainnet, with the deposit pool just being full. Um, so, you know, he was kind of saying that this leading to a bad experience. So Wes said, thank you to clarify the deposit will be full once your farmers end up abusing our protocol and won't be able to accept your deposits if that happens. He says, what do you mean by deposit will be full and your farmers abusing our protocol? For what it's worth, I'm getting a deposit pool has room for zero ETH error. So this is exactly what uh, Invis was saying that you know they'll make they'll fill out the um, deposit pool so people won't be able to um, dip, like mint uh, our ETH. So he says the error you're getting is because the deposit pool is full. As we are a decentralized protocol, we have to balance two sides of an equation: people that want to run validators and people that want to mint our ETH. You guys are bringing this out of balance by only bringing a large influx of our ETH minters which causes our buffer, the deposit pool to max out. Our new space can only be unlocked once people start mini pools, validators, which there is no incentive for on the testnet. To be very clear, I don't work for Rocket Pool, I'm just a community member. So Invis, I think, like responded really nicely, um, although like in a slightly cut Invis way, but that's fine. And then uh, Patches backed him up by saying, I recommend just, I recommend just telling Eigenlayer test users to use Haleshki STETH, which is Lido's ETH, um, that's um, what we wind up telling them when they come to us looking for help. So basically what happens is these people are taking up support time, asking for help minting our ETH. They can't mint our ETH, so they just tell them to go to STETH or buy our ETH in the secondary market if they want, basically. Okay, next there's a new grassroots campaign. This has kind of been bubbling for a few months now, but Eric, uh, Eric uh, Connor has kind of pushed it to the front. He says, today... Um, Nanex, Cool, and I are launching an effort to help raise the Ethereum gas limit from 30 million gas to 40 million gas. Gas. This can result in a 15 to 33 percent reduction in L1 gas fees. We're calling on solo stakers, client teams, pools, and community members to help. It says pump the gas, pump the gas.org. So they made a new website as well. And that's Mariano is um, Nanex Cool. So he says if you're a staker, it's simple as setting flags on execution and consensus clients these flags as well as the validator checker are on our site. So if you go to that site, it'll tell you how to do it. Um, I don't think uh, there's much in the way of like how to do a rocket pool just yet, but um, if the campaign catches attention, it might be the case. Um, Mark Zeller, of course, um, who's from Aave, he says, this will not reduce transaction fees, no really stake of revenue. Priority fees will still stay low. It will just add blow and maybe more burdened ETH. A request of increase is reasonable so why not and um, a couple of people in the rocket pool community have similar sentiments to mark zeller here by saying the con the impact on the ethereum was not going to be that great but yeah you can't stop it it's permissionless i think there's some issues with builders who might not make a block for you if your gas is not configured the right way i think that's what they mean here by client teams um, and community members like to get on board with this so then those errors don't come up but i'm not sure if those have been fixed or not Okay, so earlier I insinuated there were some issues with um, with um, the SEC, um, and we got some news here again from the SEC getting smacked down by um, a court in Utah this time. So this is the debt box case, um, and um, Eleanor uh, Terrett here had this tweet saying, the Utah judge has found the SEC engaged in bad faith conduct against crypto firm debt box. The judge has placed sanctions on the SEC for abuse of judicial process, ordered them to pay the legal fees or debt box, and denied its motion to dismiss the charges without prejudice, meaning it will 
not be able to refile the same charges at a later date. Uh, full decision here. So um, here we have Eleanor, then she gives more details. Actually, I prefer to go to Meta Lawman here, uh, who says the judge in the debt box case has issued 80 page opinion sanctioning the SEC for egregious min misconduct in the case. The opinion is devastating to the SEC as an institution and the particular lawyers who committed the misconduct. The judge made it crystal clear that the SEC lawyers did not make an error, they lied intentionally. In an opinion that will surely be cited by litigants across the country for years to come, the judge found that the critical evidence the commission offered to obtain and defend the ex parte um, TRO, which is an, some kind of um, enforcement order, uh, lacked any basis in fact, yet the commission nevertheless advanced that evidence in deliberately false and misleading ways. SC engaged in gross abuse of the power entrusted to it by Congress, SEC undermined the integrity of the judicial process. The judge has ordered the SEC to pay the attorney's fees um, of the defendant in the case. This is a sad day. The SEC was once a giant institution, sorry, a great institution, respected around the globe for its competence and integrity. Now is the time for accountability. The judge found the SEC engaged in gross abuse of the power entrusted to it by Congress. Will Congress do anything about this? So this is absolutely damning. Like, shocking um ruling against the sec and people were just like full of hate for the sec basically and some of the language used by this judge here was really like pointed like um kind of showing about how um how badly they acted and you can read that um, information follow the tweets and here paul graywall of course who is uh, the legal chief legal officer with coinbase really pounced on this and like brought the uh, like picked out some key uh, quotes from it and said uh, the worst part is the guess who pays for these sanctions? You and me and every US taxpayer. The commission just foisted a bill onto every one of us for their litigation misconduct. So this is uh, basically really bad. And if Coinbase and like others are really paying attention to this, and I think it's going to start um, acting in their um, in their cases that they they have against the SEC. So definitely keep an eye on that one. And finally, uh, we're going to end today's episode with. Um, more news out of Coinbase and how their lawyers are basically um, saying that the SEC, SEC is um, using a default judgment ruling in their case, but that should not be used. And basically, they're using it erroneously because that was, um, you know, the, the in the in the insider trading case, it had nothing to do with um, securities in the secondary market. And basically, the the SEC is again um, mis misrepresenting facts of the case. So. The SEC have been in for a really bad time recently, and it looks like it's going to get a lot worse, which is one of the reasons why people are saying that the spot ETH the ETF will probably go through, because if it goes to the court, the court's going to smack them down again, and they're going to lose the case, um, and which will just be further embarrassment to the SEC. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, on that note, thank you all for watching, listening, and being part of the Rocket Fuel community. I hope you all are having a lovely week so far, and I will see you tomorrow, which is Wednesday. So, thanks all. Bye.